there's a story behind that. I, I, I actually went to the recruiter station with Chris oh, really? yeah. when he first signed up. Okay. And he didn't want me to be. And I told him, don't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. I, just, I, knew his, I knew his personality enough mm -hmm. that it wasn't a good fit. And that was true. And then I took you to a magic game. Yeah. <laughs> you took me to a magic game. You showed off. You flashed all that money. You flashed all, that, all that cash. And I was like, man. I was like, I can go nuke school. I and can get go to magic game. I get, I get 11 grand signing bonus. I'm going to be rolling in the dough. Hey, we in. Oh, what up? What up? Hey. Oh, hey, what's going on? Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, guys. How are you all doing? Welcome to The Chris and Kyle Show. We have a special guest episode this week. This is Chris's brother, Keith. Everyone cheer for him. There's no one here. No one can cheer. What's going on, Keith? How you doing? Uh, I'm pretty good, man. I uh, really appreciate you guys letting me come out and yeah, man. hang out with you guys for a couple days. LA's pretty dope. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. Uh, You've been kind of walking around, walking around like an L.A. vagrant. <laughs> yeah, so I, I, I walked 15.2 miles yesterday. Uh -huh. Just uh, figured, I mean, these guys were busy, and I'm just out here, so I just go do what I want to do. And just, just, it kind of like, sucks. Like, I feel bad that I'm so busy, <laughs> and I can't hang out with you more and for, like, the, the two days that you're here. Yeah. but I mean, can, we are doing something cool tonight, though. That's, yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. We are. Thanks it's to a, Keith, which is awesome. Wait, okay, so what are the games that we're seeing tonight? We're Gonzaga, going to two Florida Sweet State. 16 games. We're going to the Sweet 16 games in Anaheim tonight. Uh, Gonzaga, Florida State, and Michigan, Texas Tech are the two games there, which will be very cool. Yeah, I mean, really excited to go see these games. Obviously, I'm a ginormous Florida State fan. Yeah, look at I'm that. wearing the shirt because you know, <laughs> I'm prepped for the game. Um, and uh, this is a, a an interesting first matchup is the Gonzaga-Florida State game is mm -hmm. that – this is only the fourth time in the history of the current NCAA format that two teams have played in the Sweet 16 two years in a row. Oh, wow. That's crazy. Really? I didn't yes. Because yes. Gonzaga played FSU last year last in the Sweet 16. Last year, and Florida State won by 15 points. And in the history, well, history is not with Florida State. Mm -hmm. uh, the other three times, they were split. Mm. So, But uh, there's a lot of talk, and that, that, you know, Gonzaga was the fourth number one seed. Mm. Yeah. So They're like the most vulnerable the, yeah. one. Potentially. Yeah, and yeah, they, just, they match up really well. They're two great defensive teams. The same thing with even the Texas Tech. Um, Who's the dude Michigan on Texas game. Tech that I didn't know about? Jared Culver. Jared Culver. Yeah, because I'm dumb, yeah. right? Yeah. I don't know. I've never heard of him. Projected Apparently, he's really good. They, they, they talk to him. They, they talk about him. They, literally, on the podcast I was just listening to, one of the Ringer podcasts, they were talking mm. about him. Heard. Yeah, it's projected like round number five in the draft. Oh, okay, cool. I did watch some of Michigan because they played Florida. Mm -hmm. They were good. Obviously, they so you know they won by like fifteen. Obviously, obviously, I know you because I'm yeah. your brother. Uh, at least the, uh, the, what what you've led me to believe. Um, <laughs> oh. So, d just introduce yourself to the people. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, you you went to FSU and you, and I did. have a lot in common with me and Kyle <laughs> as far as you didn't really make it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, basically, I'm I'm, I'm 35 years old, a uh, little older than Chris, you know. Um, <clears throat> yeah, big sports person growing up, always have been. I, mean, I played football, baseball, basketball. I wrestled. Um, the the stuff you guys talked about with the the weight cutting thing was was really good, and I that was something I dealt with um, at, in high school as well. Um, yep, yeah, went to college, always been a Florida State fan, so I was like, oh, I'll go to Florida State. Didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, Were you just, was, like, trying to be, like, a rebel? Was that, like, it? Like, on why I liked Florida State? Yeah. On, honest, the, uh, what started it was, so, kind of little background for the people that, like, uh, Chris and I, we're, we're, we're half-brothers. Mm -hmm. uh, Your last mom, name's Wallace. Yes. My last name's Stott. We have different dads. Yes. Same mom, different dad. Um, when my mom and his dad got married and TJ and James came in the fold, our, our, your half-brothers, my step-brothers. Um, Several half- and step-siblings. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a, it's a ridiculous yeah. It is a <laughs> many branches to this tree. Um, they were already Florida State fans. And I, I like being around my, my own father he wasn't a big sports guy so like a lot of influence came from when you know uh they came around and they were already florida state fans right so mm. i just kind of latched on to that kind of and it was it. you know being from florida it made sense and 
yeah, and from then it's been just kept it going, mm-hmm. you know. So did you was, grow but, up a so, Florida fan because of your dad? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. like basically, like both of my parents, like mo- like mom was probably like default Florida fan because of Tommy, right? Yeah, yeah, but d- Tom's my dad. Uh, if I do refer to Tommy, that is my <laughs> my father. Hey, dad. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um so. You didn't make it through college, just no, like just no. like us. Our problems were a, each other, probably each other. Each other. <laughs> we were hanging out. We were watching too much Netflix, too much uh, and never going to class. <clears throat> See, Netflix wasn't really around, I, I was it, <laughs> but I had my own reason, my own difficulties with college. Um, too much partying. Here, th- right? There was there was there was three reasons. A, I worked full time. Oh wow! So right. that was like you know having yeah. to pay for everything. That's gonna fuck you. Yep. I have and no idea how people do it. Mm-hmm. Like I'm going it's to crazy. school right now. It's fucking community college, and yeah. I, I can't. I couldn't handle that. And B, um, I partied full time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> two full time jobs. <laughs> and C, I just I never had the interest. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and you guys have talked about this before. Um, like a lot of the classes I had to take beginning on. Mm-hmm. That shit should have been taken care of in yep. high school. Mm-hmm. Yep. That AA stuff sucks. Yeah. And I just, like, I don't care about art history. I don't care about, like, English and stuff like I mean, I, I understand the importance of having, you know, knowing how to write a paper and all that mm-hmm. shit. Mm-hmm. But I just, like, I had no attention. Like, I was going to school for engineering, and I wasn't taking anything geared to engineering. Mm-hmm. So... What am I doing? And like, yep. and what are you money? paying for? Yeah. That's like that's more specific. And even if there's like a like a potential of you gaining some type of interest in, because like we've been talking mm-hmm. recently about how like you're writing like sports papers, right? Like English has everything to do with that. Like does, being able to uh, you know have good rhetoric and be able to uh, construct a good argument and have good writing and shit, right? But like a lot of times a fucking college class isn't conducive to like the baseline no. interest of a subject. And that, that, that's actually a really interesting point because like, even when I was writing that, when writing this opinion piece on like Zion Williamson and the comparisons that have been made to him, um, like I was in my head, I'm thinking about like the five paragraph format. Yeah. Like I got to do an intro. Yeah. I got to do three, nah. three, yeah. three. And I'm like, I, I went away from it and, and I'm just kind of like rolling through it. I'm, I'm, I was actually working on it in the airport uh, on the way here, like typing it up and kind of revising it and stuff like that. Cause I kind of changed my opinion like three times <laughs> <laughs> in the middle as I'm writing and like the whole like, uh, feel of it changed as I got to the mm-hmm. end. Like, but I like, got... well, that happens a lot of times when you're writing. I don't know if this happens to you a lot, but like while you're writing something, like obviously we like delve more into narrative stuff, mm-hmm. like fiction. Yeah. 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 We, we, we but a lot of times when you write something out, the actual act of writing it out will flesh out that idea more mm-hmm. and make you sometimes like, so, all right. So I went from my iPhone six S and to mm-hmm. this fucking lame ass iPhone <laughs> five, right? Which is literally five years old, five years old, six I mean, years you old. You say that like the iPhone that we both have, the six S isn't lame at this point too. It's already, yeah, <laughs> it was already old and I had to go to an even yeah. older phone because my iPhone six S shit itself. It just, right? just but I'm died. like, I had to uh, like consolidate all of my notes and stuff. Mm. Uh, and I was like looking you back your through notes a lot, dude. So, so probably 800 notes. Uh, like I had to whittle down from like 1200 because there was like a lot of repeat notes. Wait, 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 you had 1200 notes. Mm-hmm. Holy, but, but you have to think about it. Like Jeez. this is going back like five, six years, yeah. all the shit in the Navy. Yeah. I've like work stuff, writing stuff, oh, okay. fucking whatever. Um, I think I have maybe six, six. No, dude, I knew I use notes so much. Yeah. I don't fucking, use them at all. Really? <laughs> I, I'm fucking, I'm nuts. Like I'm constantly, how uh, many, uh, notes. how many freestyles are on there? Oh, a lot. Yep. Dude. Yep. <laughs> um, just that. I probably have a note that that's just <laughs> three. Ricky, Ricky. I'm like, oh, this is a cool beat. You just wrote Ricky, Ricky, Ricky. disc scratch, and then another one that says ticky ticky ticky, <laughs> and then I forgot the original Ricky, yep. Ricky, Ricky. Yep. So I did another did note another to one. remember. <laughs> um, but anyways, like the fucking amount of shit that like I look back on that like sh- shit that I wrote like while I was in the Navy or something, mm-hmm. like yeah. ideas that I wrote down, and I'm like, yeah, that's awful. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a really shitty idea. Um, yeah, we had very different Navy experiences mm-hmm. overall. Um, oh yeah, you were in the Navy too. I don't even think we mentioned. Yeah. That. So yes. after after FSU. So yeah, basically looked to, to, to the quick dirty. Um, went to Florida State. Uh, did very good. <laughs> uh, went to community college for like a semester, 
had back surgery in there and, and uh, didn't really know I was going with my life. So I said, you know, I gave myself one semester, went to this community college and said, if you don't do this, you're going to the military. Like these are your options. So didn't do well. Well, and that um, kind of like your guys' family, a bunch of you have been in the military, right? Well, our oldest brother, James. So was, like you like, kind of had an example. All three of us yeah. like sort and, of went the exact same yeah. route. Um, yeah. And the, and the funny thing was that like James did the same thing that I did in the military, but that was not my intention. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I, I called a recruiter station and the Navy guy picked up first. So I talked to him first right. and he had me take the ASVAB. And mm -hmm. I did really well. So he's like, oh, you could be a nuke in the Navy. Like, this is what you got to do. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. Mm -hmm. Like, and I was like, now, it didn't even like dawn on me to like call James up and be like, hey, is this even is worth the shit? <laughs> wow. So like you didn't, you, it wasn't really like you were influenced by James at all. No, I kind of all. always had that in my head. You know, the like, why wouldn't it make sense? Because, yeah. Well, and then like, just when how, you like, went, you mm -hmm. also went to be a nuke as well. But I was absolutely of, well, influenced yeah, yeah. by them. Well, did, there's, there's a story behind that. I, I, I actually went to the recruiter station with Chris oh, really? when yeah. he first signed up okay. and he didn't want me to be. And I told him, don't do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was right mm -hmm. <laughs> because yeah. I just, I knew, I knew his personality enough mm -hmm. that it wasn't a good fit. And that was true. And then I took you to a magic game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you took me to a magic game. You showed off, you flashed all that money, <laughs> all, that, all that cash. And I was all like, man, cash. I was like, I can go nuke school. <laughs> I and go to Magic Game. I get, I get 11 grand signing bonus. I'm going to be rolling in the dough. You got to see Dwight Howard up close. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because that was actually an interesting moment mm -hmm. in Magic history. That was the day that Dwight Howard stayed. It was like the trade deadline. Oh, the year yeah. they were going to trade him. Oh. And yeah. then he left anyway. And then, yeah. <laughs> like all Magic Center. Now look too. where he is. <laughs> they, they leave, you know, just like Shaq before him. They go to L.A. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like I always like kind of thought that like you, you were just like, well, you know, like James did that because that's obviously what I did. I failed out of college and yeah. I was like and I, I remember getting an email mm -hmm. uh, while I was like it was like summer break or something like that. And I was back home and I was sitting on the couch and I was looking at an email and like the email said that like I was putting being put on academic probation. And uh, I told mom that and she was like, all right, well, what are you going to do now? <laughs> And I was like, that is the tone of an experienced mother. <laughs> That's the last of six right yeah. there. She's, yeah. like, All right. She's like, God damn, another one. <laughs> I mean, outside of Cynthia, everyone in our family, like none of us have made it through college. Yeah. So. So, like, I remember talking to Cynthia a long time ago. Cynthia's their mom. About no, no. <laughs> Just kidding. It's their uh, sister. Yeah. But I remember talking to Cynthia a long time ago about like about your experience with college. And she mm -hmm. was like, I think that he had time to do three, uh, two things, uh, out of three of the, out of these three. And he picked the wrong two of the <laughs> yeah, three. He I could did. either, uh, work, uh, study or party. <laughs> he picked the wrong two. I did. I did. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I don't really consider it like in hindsight, you know, what it's led, led me to in my life. Like, mm -hmm. I don't really consider it a bad thing. Yeah. You know? I, I'm, I'm at the point in my life where, like, I actually believe that uh, degrees are, for the most part, worthless. Mm -hmm. because well, they're, 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 it's oversaturated now. Mm -hmm. There's, everybody has them, mm -hmm. so it doesn't mean as much as it used to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and like, it depends people on People that graduate from really good schools with, with degrees have a hard time finding jobs. Like, yeah. And it, 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 it depends good jobs, on the, I should say. depends on the field you're going into. Like, if you mm -hmm. want to, obviously, you want to be a doctor. Like, yeah. yes, you have to go to school. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, if you want to be a lawyer, yes, you have to go to school, but like f the, the run of the mill, like sort of jobs that most people mm -hmm. get into, like, it's just not necessary. And a lot mm -hmm. of times the work experience and is, is well, better. that's the weird part, right? You go to college for four years and then you get out and you start applying for jobs and they're like, we want three years experience. And you're like, well, what have I been doing? <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I, I, I saw it when I got out of the Navy too. I mean, I spent uh, ten and a half years in the Navy. Oh, he spent way longer than you. Uh, You're soft. <laughs> doing <laughs> nuclear power with the emphasis on on chemistry and radiological fundamentals, and like in my last three and a half years, I was an instructor. Okay. In, in these fields, um, at the school that you know what Chris went through, and I had a hard time getting a job with That's that background. Crazy. That's like, pretty crazy. I mean, no one even wanted to talk to me because it was just the way the job market is everything's mm -hmm. online and is a little annoying you know yeah. like you can't talk to people you can't right. just walk into an mm -hmm. office and be like hey 
here's my resume. This is, you know, like, no, I'm man, sit down. I listen to podcasts. It's because everyone uses ZipRecruiter. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Yep. Not like for, for those that don't know, like the job that we went into, uh, all me, you and James were mm -hmm. all nukes. Yeah. Like, uh, James was a nuke mechanic. You were also a nuke mechanic, but you were like a different, like kind of nuke mechanic, so it, right? It's, it's very similar to like you going to ACNR school. Mm -hmm. Uh, I had a, I was a nuke mechanic. Uh, so I did all the mechanic stuff and I, I did more so than most of the people in like my second, you know, secondary branch did. Um, but I was what's called ELT, engineering laboratory technician. Mm -hmm. So I did all the chemistry <clears throat> on the nuclear, you know, the the power plant and the steam plant and all stuff like that. And uh, we did all the different, you know, radiological stuff like we tested mm -hmm. to make sure everything yeah. was within compliance. And that, I mean, that played an interesting point in my career and, and for those that might be confused this isn't like nuclear bombs that's what i was just yes. gonna say yeah. it's <laughs> nuclear propulsion yes. okay so yes. like submarines yeah. and uh like, yeah. yeah so submarines and aircraft carriers have nuclear power plants mm -hmm. on them and that's how they propel the ship that's how they provide power electric uh, uh wait you guys weren't blowing people up all the time <clears throat> no that's no, no. Not. well i mean that's cool. my ship did but it wasn't true. with nukes that's yeah. true and the the cool thing about it is that the the history of the Navy is the Navy actually started the nuclear power program in the country, mm. and it's a, a lot a thing that a lot of people don't know is that the first thing that was made was the first submarine nuclear reactor, and then from there, uh, Admiral Rickover, who was he's the founder of the the nuclear Navy, also created the first commercial nuclear reactor plant in the country as well. Mm. PBS has like a pretty sweet uh, thing about it. I never saw it. PBS. Yeah. I, I didn't yeah. want to learn anything. <laughs> <laughs> so like, so both you and James actually made it through. You made it through nuke school, which mm -hmm. like even getting to nuke school is a, a fucking sort of an accomplishment in itself because you have to have a, a pretty high ASFAB. You have to be pretty smart in order mm -hmm. to even hey, to get to the Hey, what's the ASFAB? Precipice. So the ASFAB is basically like you a, military people in your is a <laughs> letters. It's a, it's a test that you Government. take. It's, a, it's, it's like a placement test for the yeah. for the military. Yeah, it's the it's the SAT of yeah. the going into the military. <clears throat> but yeah, you need a pretty high score to get into nuke school. Yeah, but yes. like, what's the what's the attrition rate uh, at nuke school? It was like twenty five percent or something like that, right? It was pretty high. <sighs> when I was there, I think it was around that. Um, so. In the like, brief history of the nuclear field, uh, the nuclear program in the Navy actually used to have a higher attrition rate than Harvard Law. Mm. Does attrition people that don't make it? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It was it was over fifty percent, and Jeez. then they changed some stuff and and changed how like how people taught and stuff like that. Um, and then it, yeah, it was about twenty five percent from you know start to finish. Mm -hmm. So. Out of three, I was the one that didn't yeah. make it. Mm -hmm. uh, We're still above became, average, became, which means <laughs> if one more of your guys' siblings joined, they would make it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Statistically, above average, yeah. statistically speaking. <laughs> yeah. Um, fucking yeah, I became a conventional mechanic, obviously after that, and fucking got out immediately. What was the reason that you didn't stay in? Like why? So you said ten and a half years. Did you re up once? Once. Okay. Yeah, just one time. <clears throat> so um, my intention was never to to stay in for twenty years when I joined. Mm -hmm. It was to do, you know, we initially signed up for a six year contract, and it, mine was to do my six years. Just uh, unfortunately, fortunately, whatever you want to call it, um, I was stationed on the USS George Washington, which at the time was in Norfolk, Virginia and uh was set to go to yokosuka japan mm -hmm. the first ever you know nuclear powered ship to be stationed overseas and so i was over there when my contract was coming up and i didn't have a job lined up a car lined up and you were whatever. in japan and so it was, was hard to do those things and yeah i just decided you know hey well because the way you know the navy rotation works is you uh uh a C command and then you do a short command. So I was like, okay, well I'll do three, four more years and do a short command and then kind of get all that stuff set up. Mm -hmm. um, 
not to say that even at the end, you know, towards the end of my, my shore duty when I was at Charleston, when, you know, and I was there as an instructor at the same time Chris was going through, which was really cool because, um, you know, kind of bonded a little bit better. Yeah. Um, it gave us I, like an opportunity to reconnect, yes, which yeah, is really cool. Yeah. Like I could, it's, and I didn't have to fucking stay in my barracks for the, yeah, the entire yeah, you know, I had a house to <laughs> come over and yeah. whatever. Um, but not I, like if, uh, situations wouldn't worked out the way they did, I, I was going to stay in. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, basically I had said the same thing like I did when I was in college I said, if you don't mm -hmm. get this shit right, you know, this semester, then you're going to go into the military. Uh, it was the same thing. I said, if I didn't, find myself in a relationship that I really felt like could go forward. Um, then I was going to stay in mm -hmm. because the, the big thing, the most difficult thing about the military and the reason why so many people in the military get married and their marriages fail is you have to move a mm -hmm. lot mm -hmm. every three years. And you know, I, I was at the, what I, in what I, what I call and what other people call the, the shit or get off the pot point of my <laughs> career. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to do another, you know, three years or four years, then why not finish it out? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. And fortunately I was able to, you know, re reconnect with my now wife, um, at a mutual friend's wedding and, uh, everything worked out. And so, that led to your own wedding. That yeah, might've had one of the yeah. greatest best man speeches of all it, time. It did. That was it what did. I've heard. It did. In uh, the newspapers. And the, there's uh, no way that was in a the, newspaper. Uh, <laughs> the, the articles I'm pr pretty sure it was in Time Magazine, as well as the yeah. New Yorker, and other prestigious Time, time, time <laughs> Magazine Best Man of the Year. <laughs> best Best Man of best the Year. Best because if you're man? just the best man of the year, that's all men. But if you're the best Best Man of the Year, that's different. Yeah. Gary Gary Harris Harris. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, I just got married. Eight months ago, damn um, September first, mm -hmm. uh, and yes, Chris was my best man, mm -hmm. for lack of options. But <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. had four other brothers to choose. Yeah. From. <laughs> um, but it was yeah, it was it was really cool. I mean, uh, we used it like cause my mom has wanted to do this like massive family reunion thing for a long oh, time. Oh, that's cool. So yeah. I made it as like a kind of other way to do a family reunion, mm -hmm. which was, uh, let's have a family reunion where everyone celebrates me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was like, for you're sure, not like allowed the... to stress me out. You're not allowed to be mean to me. It's my wedding. <laughs> but that was like, that was for sure. The coolest part about the wedding it was like, like, yeah, but because it's such a, a huge family mm -hmm. and like, we all sort of like, win our own separate ways. Like, even though like me, you and James are all in the Navy, like yeah. we're fucking, sp you, when you're in the Navy, you're fucking spread. Well, it's kind of weird, right? Cause you guys have a really big family, but it's in a different way than I have a really big family. Yeah, exactly. Cause you there's guys like so many different much parents more. and, mm -hmm. and different like extended families and stuff. Yeah. Whereas all my siblings are all from the same parents and we mm -hmm. all live until now. I live across the country, mm -hmm. but we've all lived pretty close together. And you're the with oldest my sibling. Family. I'm the oldest. Yeah. And like your youngest sibling is how old? Uh, the girls are, Juniors in high school. They're nine years younger than me. I just turned twenty six. Seventeen. They are yeah. seventeen. Yeah. Math. Yeah. So like they're they're much closer than mm -hmm. than our family. Yeah. It's. <laughs> oh yeah, because your guys' ages too are, mm -hmm. are really spread yeah. apart. It's it, it, if if you look at like this isn't part of Chris's family, but part of like from my dad's remarriage. Mm -hmm. Like my my youngest sister is eleven. Oh wow. Yeah. Like that's pretty crazy. Our our sister's oldest daughter and my sister are the same, the same age or similar. Age. Yeah, like wow. a week apart from each other. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's uh, yeah, a little ridiculous. <laughs> okay, so you got out of the navy. You're in construction now. Yes, I'm a project manager for a general contractor. We do uh, civil and marine construction. Uh, mostly, what I do is yeah, like seawalls, docks. Uh, oh, right. We do dredging work, um, shore protection, kind of. Things is this like, like that. related to what you did in the navy at all? No, it's, it's so no, weird. It's so all. weird. Uh, I mean, from so in the navy, I like uh, because I, I I always kept it really open-ended. I knew I didn't want to stay in there for 20 years, but I figured there's a chance you will. Mm -hmm. So I did everything I could 
to progress and, yeah, and, to, and make to rise in the ranks. Like, yeah. So, so I, actually, I got out as a chief. I made chief at seven years, which, which is, is really fucking fast. Um, yeah, which was one of those people that yells at you when you don't, when, or, mm -hmm. when you do salute, them. <laughs> <laughs> which is funny because like when I like it happened to me a lot, especially in Charleston, because you mm -hmm. have all these kids that are like straight out of boot camp and you're walking around mm -hmm. and. They don't fully. Not only are they young, but they're crazy fucking awkward too. Yeah, and they don't fully understand all the rules and regulations and how to recognize whether it's a chief or mm -hmm. if it's an officer. Officer, you salute. Chiefs, you don't. Um, so I, I'd always walk like I'd be walking down and the, you know someone would salute me and I would just say nope, nope. <laughs> nope. nope. I I forget what I was watching or listening to, but I literally heard someone say. You just, you, they were like, they served in the military or something, or they were talking about the military and they're like, you just, d just salute anyone because they won't get mad at you if they're not supposed to. And I was like, I have firsthand accounts yeah, that say that that is false true. and yeah. they will still get mad it, at you. No. True. And it is, it is, is it? And you got a lot of guys get power hungry and, or, or whatever mm. it is. And they feel they can just do whatever the fuck they want. Mm. And I, I wasn't that way because one of the things with me in the Navy is I just, I didn't fucking care about the mm -hmm. rules. Yeah. You know, I thought most of the rules were stupid. Yeah. And I followed them to the minimum point. <laughs> you um, did what you had to do. Exactly. But not like what you had to do. <laughs> but it was, it was like, uh, the other thing I was thinking about is I had a, a good friend, Joe, who was like pseudo mentor to me, you know, uh, at his retirement. And he was, he was all, he retired as a chief. Um, really good guy. And he would salute him back. Oh, Really? really? Yeah. And he, I asked him, I said, Joe, why do you do that? He goes, respect. That's cool. Okay. He's like, if they, if this, the, they're not right in saluting me, but like, he's like, if they're going to salute me, at least I should salute them back. Huh. That's interesting. Um, seems, seems like cool guy, Joe. <laughs> shout yeah, out to he Joe. was, he was, he was, yeah. Do you yeah, yeah. Shout out to Joe. I don't, I'm, I'm not in touch with him anymore. <laughs> he's in Arizona somewhere. So. All right. Um, do you remember the time that I saluted you? I don't remember that. <laughs> so I was walking out of Rickover with, uh, it was me and like maybe like three of my friends. We were like mm -hmm. walking out of class and it was you and one of your chief buddies okay. uh, that were walking in. It was probably Joe. Uh, maybe. <laughs> I, I have no idea. Uh, but like I waited for him to like sort of look away and then I gave one of these <laughs> <laughs> and uh, fucking one of my friends was like, dude, that was a chief. Like, <laughs> like, and your brother's a chief. You should be able to recognize. I was like, I was like, dude, that was my brother. <laughs> oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and I was like, oh, fuck. Is Keith going to be mad about that? Like next no. time I fucking yeah. hang out. Um, you embarrassed me in front of my friends, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, like I said, I never really fucking cared about that shit. I, it was so dumb and just like. Was, was that something that like other chiefs or officers knew about you? Yeah, it Did was. Did that bother people? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I, the, in the chief community, is it's like they get so tight knit mm -hmm. and everyone's just. Because at that point, at that point in your military career, it. it making like further rank becomes less of being able to do your job and more of like, you have to be on this committee and you have okay. to do it becomes politics. It, yeah. And, yeah. and then I fucking hated that. Mm -hmm. shit. I played the game. Like I did like some of the shit. Um, I never really sold it. And I was always half-assed, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, I, I, I did, at that point, like when, after I made chief and then obviously like the last year I was or eight months I was in, like me and Merritt had got back together and, you know, so I was like a hundred percent sold on getting out. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Um, I like really stopped playing <laughs> and it was very apparent and I, I pissed a couple of people off, but they deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was pissed. At, <clears throat> one of the big things. And I actually yelled at like, uh, master chief who's e9 that's the highest enlisted person you can have i yelled at him on the last day uh in the navy because so one of the, the things is when you finish a tour you get an end of tour award so as an e6 getting off the ship i was given a com it's a the navy marine corps accommodation medal which is a very high achievement for that rank mm -hmm. it's usually four chiefs and then they gave me the one below that when I got out as a chief and I just 
basically looked at him and told him to fuck off. <laughs> was like, yeah. How do you feel like your your overall Navy experience has like influenced you as a person and like as like like in your job like as a, a leader because like you're you're in charge of people. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. It's um, so basically with my experience in the Navy is I was put into a leader position leadership position probably before I should have been. Um, when I got to my ship, there was a lot of people that are about to leave and a lot of people that just showed up and I got kind of picked as like the guy that got put in charge of everybody. Mm -hmm. And I was put in charge of people that were <clears throat> been around longer than me. Right. Um, so it, it really forced me into like a really weird leadership. And, and I, I developed a lot of really bad habits as a leader. Like I was a very angry <laughs> right. person. <laughs> um, yeah. Like I, at, at one point I actually like prided on how many people I made cry. <laughs> Jesus oh, <geez. laughs> I was that guy. I was that guy. And, um, it was about three years in the, being on the ship. I had a really good, uh, guy that, uh, was a mentor to me and he sat me down and he said, you know, you have all the potential in the world and all this stuff. And he's like, just taught me how to be the right mm -hmm. leader. It's like, you don't have to yell at people. Mm -hmm. You can just talk to them. Yeah. Like you can do things different. You could be, and it was like an eye opening experience. Right. And ever since then I've, I've changed the way I am. Mm -hmm. Um, came a little bit more laid back. Yeah. I wouldn't say laid back. I was, I was, I was more proactive and, uh, not reactive. Okay. And, uh, just on how I dealt with people specifically, right. like when you walk on, you know, like, and you go down and you, you check something and someone's standing there like, you don't just start flying off the handle. You just mm -hmm. like say, Hey, you know, well, we could do this. We could do that. Like, and then you involve people, the, the, the people that you're in charge of, you involve them more in the like kind of thought process and get them kind of like engaged. And then that gets them more like proactive into their own job itself, which mm -hmm. was, um, like I said, it was, it was eye opening and in something I've taken forward. Uh, yeah, like I think this might be. I'm, I, there's probably a lot of factors that go into this. Like one, you kind of had like one foot all the way out. It is a different environment. But like I remember, because uh, I like a lot of my friends from a school had you as an instructor. Yeah, and you know, like I would go out and have lunch with them and stuff, and they were like, "Dude, your brother is so fucking chill." <laughs> and they're like, and that, like, uh, and they're like, <sighs> like, they're, and one of my buddies was like, like all of his mannerisms, like he like does the same stuff as you, and I'm like, oh, okay, like, like what? Because I was interested in like this, the, the kind of, and he was like, I don't know how to explain it. And I'm like, You're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if there's if, if there's two big things I could take away with for from my entire time in the Navy, um, one of them is being an instructor. Like that was one of the coolest things I've ever done, and I loved teaching kids uh not only in the classroom setting but like in one-on-one in -on -one settings and chris you know this you go and like have to get help and stuff like that um and i just loved seeing like taking a kid that was like borderline might make it might not make it and like pushing them over the edge that like i didn't care about the kid that was like the smartest kid in the class yeah. mm -hmm. like they're i wanted fine. i wanted that fine, yeah. i wanted that borderline kid <laughs> And then could just mm -hmm. like yeah. give that extra oomph yeah. into making it. You wanted um, the Murray States of nuke school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You wanted the bubble kids. You know, um, push them into the tournament. Yeah, and I just like because like in in, in the school, like, it's it's very strict on how you have to teach. It's a it's a mixed media platform, so you have like a, a PowerPoint, but then you stop the PowerPoint. You walk around, you get on the chalkboard, you mm -hmm. write stuff up. And, uh, there's a specific be, way that you have to yeah. answer questions and stuff yeah. like that. So weird. Yeah. Like if anybody asks a question, like you have to, uh, be like your, your question is this, this is the answer. Did I answer your question? Yep. Oh, that's really weird for every yeah, single and, question. And you're supposed asked. to rephrase the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's like if I'm a server and I repeat back the order to make sure I get it right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah, that's really it, weird. It's, it's like a, yeah, a feedback kind of thing. And Which is a common thing, just uh, like among like Navy communications, uh, mm -hmm. is is like that that um, mm -hmm. the, the repeat backs. 
Yeah, like, are you supposed to do that if an officer gives you an order? Are you supposed to be like, this is what you want me to do? No, no, (laughs) this was just a classroom setting. Or would that just be what you do if you're a dick? Well, no, no, like you don't do that like like face to face normally. Oh, okay, like okay. You, you just be like, okay, like I whatever. Like, mm-hmm. um, and, and sometimes you don't even do that. It depends on the person. Um, but like usually, like uh, you'll have those kind of comms. Like if you're standing watch and you're talking over a radio. Yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah. so like you, you know you repeat back so mm-hmm. that <clears throat> you know that you have the right order. Uh, so you you talked about how so you went from being a chief, mm-hmm. basically knowing your entire job, yeah, and getting out. <clears throat> and have like having a job that is completely unrelated and you're in charge of people that have been there longer than you that know more than you. Right. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. How do you deal with that? It's hard. It, it really is. And, um, it's, it's, you know, I've been doing this for three and a half years now. It's a struggle a lot of times because mm-hmm. especially coming from like a military background, um, where everything is so structured mm-hmm. and then you go into like a normal company and, and like the company, I work the for, private sector, Yeah, the, <laughs> a company I work for is not a small company. I mean, it's like a $500 million a year oh, company. Wow. I mean, last year we were ranked like 185th in the country as like the most sales. Um, but it's a family based company. So there's not this like, like, like I walk in and say, Hey, Hey, can you give me like a structure of who's in charge of who? And they're like, no. <laughs> okay. And that's what I struggle with the most because, um, I actually, cause it's so anti-military. Like mil- it is, you, and- you have a chain of command in the military that goes all the way to the top, I all came- the way to the Trumpster. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I came in, a, I came in, in a weird situation. Like I had trouble getting a job when I got in the Navy and, and like, from what I did in the Navy, most people don't have trouble, but like they don't care where they go in the world. Yeah. And I wanted to go back to Stewart because that's where my wife's family's from. That's where our family's from. Mm-hmm. And so it was, it was, uh, that was the thing. And I couldn't, you know, had trouble and spent like three months out of work. So I went to a job fair. <clears throat> well, I signed up with this company where they like help you get a job. Mm hmm. And, uh, you know, like back me and went to this job fair and I met with this guy and I, I had done construction before I joined the Navy, but I was working for like a small GC doing like little, little things. So I, that was like my fallback kind of thing. Cause mm-hmm. I really didn't want to go back in the restaurant industry cause I was done with that. Yeah. Once you're out, <laughs> stay out. Um, no, no problem with that. I spent four or five years in that and it's just, um, yeah, and so they – I was basically like an intern. They paid half my salary for the first four months. Okay. Because they, they had like – like I was a, considered a dislocated worker because I had just gotten out of the Navy. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, yeah, if you, got, if you guys hire this guy and give us a plan on how you're going to train him, we'll pay half a salary for four months. Oh, wow. No, which is a really cool program. Um, I, I know that well, we we do have uh, a lot of listeners that are like still in the Navy that mm-hmm. like, potentially might be getting out. Uh, what would you say is like the one element that that company like saw in you that like that that they appreciated? Um, since obviously, like it, it, you know, it it can't really be work experience, right? Like, like maybe it's, it's, it's it's not based on work experience Mm -hmm. at all. It's, uh, because if you're getting out of the military and then they, they look at financials and stuff like that, anything that's military related is not considered an actual financial. So it's like, basically I made $0 like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) And they're like, if you, so if you get out of the military and you move somewhere, they're like, you're considered a dislocated worker, like no matter what. Okay. Um, which was cool. So it's like, cause it's like, if you're changing, they have two different ones. There's like a state funded and a federal funded on whether you're, um, you know, just changing vocations or you're you know, forced to move because of your job or whatever that is. And, and I fell into like every single category just because based on where I was, um, yeah, and they, they, they were fucking great. I mean, what's the name of that company? It's called career source. Career source. Yeah. Shout out. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
So, you're married now. I am. I am. It's you thinking sweet. about kids? Oh, yeah. We're already working on it. Yeah. Hey yeah. You're going to be an uncle again. <laughs> yeah. You're already an uncle. Yeah. But yeah. Like, more, more of an uncle. <laughs> more of an uncle. <laughs> <laughs> the best uncle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Time Magazine's best un- uncle. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, what kind of parent are you going to be? Stay at home. <laughs> <laughs> That's the dream, dude. That's the dream. Um, so Merit's going to be a sugar mama. Yeah, yeah. She doesn't make more than me right now, but she will. She will. She will. So like a little background on this, my wife, Merit, um, I love her to death. Uh, she went to Florida. Go Gator! <laughs> got her, got her nursing degree, got her nutrition degree. Went, she was in the army. Um, did five years in the army, and then at the end time in the army, and then after she went to Duke. Oh wow! And okay. got her nurse practitioner practitioner degree, um, which is like the masters. Like she's basically a doctor, but can't do certain things because the state of Florida is stupid. Mm. Um, like she can't own her own practice. Okay. She'd state. have to go to like actual medical school to do yeah. that. In Only Florida. in Florida. Yeah. Huh. That's weird. Um, so yeah, she's been, you know, graduated last year. She's been working since over, you know, over a year now. Um, yeah. So I was like, your job's like a little bit more important than mine. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was like, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd stay home. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. <laughs> well, well, like, I mean, you can shrug shit. You, 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 it is cool. I, I mean, I, you're, you're important to infrastructure. Don't get me wrong. I love my job. Uh-huh. And um, I love like certain pro. So basically like what my job is, is I, I run a project. I'm in charge of the scheduling, the, the you know, other people that are going and how things are going and all the billing and the, you know, all that shit. Um, but I get to do a lot of shit in our neighborhood, like, mm-hmm. which I love. Like I've done a lot of parks. Like, um, like Shepherd's Park. I don't know if you guys know right there on US one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Bathtub Beach. I've done oh, okay, three cool. times. Oh wow. Um, uh, Phipps Park, which is the campground off of Locks mm-hmm. Road. I've I've done that, and it looks eighty thousand times better than it did before. So it's cool. Like I drive around, and I'm like, I did that. I did that. <laughs> I did that. And I, I I like like the greatest thing about construction is that at the end of the day, you see what you did. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, it's very... You have very tangible reward. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, that's cool. It's just... That's a pretty stressful fucking job, though. Mm. But there's probably a good amount of satisfaction in that. Like, the, the, the fact that there you is. can see... Like, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, it's just... There's there's a lot of, like... Like I said, because in the private sector versus the military sector, like, there's less structure. It makes it, like, the stressful situation's a little unnecessary is okay. the way I would put mm. it. Okay. Because it's a little bit more disorganized? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It must like also be cool. Like I I never really thought about this. Like it's in your hometown too. Yeah. Yeah. The fact that like like you're involved with so much that like Bathtub Beach and mm-hmm. shit like like grew up going there. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like fucking like you're you're uh, a a good part um a, 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 an asset to like rebuilding the community in a mm-hmm. way. Yeah, most of the public wouldn't see it that way, but that's because we're on our <laughs> right, way. Right, because there's so much fucking construction. <laughs> yeah, like, so probably, like, the most, like, polarizing story of any of the construction projects I did. This was when I did Bathtub Beach last year. Um, and to kind of explain that the, the way the job is, is we take sand and we pump it from the inlet and put it on the beach to rebuild the beach. Oh, okay. So, like, especially, like, after the hurricanes come yes, through and stuff, it's, exactly, like, a big deal. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, so we have to close off sections of the beach, mm-hmm. and people don't like that. <gasps> oh, no. Yeah. Uh, even though we're, like, the reason why the beach <laughs> is still there, I had this lady walk up to me, and she's asking, like, why. She, she's, like, she's like, can I get through? I said, no. Uh, I have equipment here. Like, I mean, I have, we have these <clears throat> ginormous machines, like, working on this beach. And it's, you know, pipeline that's pumping sand out. And she's like, I want to walk by. And I said, uh, ma'am, I'm sorry. Like, this portion of the beach is closed. You're going to have to turn it out and walk back. And she's like, well, I'm going to that house right there. I said, okay, uh, who owns that house? And she, she said some random name. And I knew who actually who owned that house. 
um, it's guys like name. you full of shit, lady. <laughs> and I said, I said, oh, ma'am, you're you're lying. You're lying. <laughs> like you you came because this is at the edge of Sailfish Point, which is just oh okay, massively yep. rich community. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I looked at the ring on her finger, and she had to have like a three carat diamond on this thing. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, yeah, you're from that way. Yep. You know? <laughs> and she had this little dog with her. It was a little lab puppy. And after I turned her away and she finally like agreed, she looked at the dog and she goes, look at the mean man. Oh no. And I was just that like, puppy thinks you're a jerk. <laughs> I, I'm like, I looked at this lady. I'm like, I was at work. I'm a, there's, there's words I would say to you that I cannot say. I'm, <laughs> I was just like, that's, that's too much. That's like, you crossed a line. Look right at here. the mean man. <laughs> Should have stole her puppy. <laughs> I'll give you a loving and home. Like, like in my in my head, all I'm you thinking. You deserve this dog. In my head, all I'm thinking about is Anchorman and Jack Black <laughs> punting Baxter. Yeah. Like I was like mm. Baxter, Baxter. <laughs> a, I could never do that to a dog, and uh, <laughs> punt the dog into the ocean. <laughs> Load the dog into those, the sandblasting. Those machine. were the anger sharks in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you, are you guys excited for these games? Nice segue, bro. Yeah. <laughs> How to do it? No, it's better not. than yours. Yours. Yeah. Is, is your... So you want to talk about sports? Yeah. Yeah. That's your segue. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. Obviously, I've never been to a basketball game live. What? Never. 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 Profe- professional or college? Either. Wow. High school? I've been to high school. Games. <laughs> I've been to high school games. Middle school. I played on middle school basketball. So you yes. ever? Do you know what a basketball is? No. So that's pretty crazy. Yeah. I wanted to go a lot when I was living in Gainesville and just mm-hmm. never did. Yeah. Damn. Mm-hmm. Never been to a Heat game, huh? No. You gotta fucking what? do it, dude. Gotta fucking do it. I gotta do it. When they when they Hopefully come when out they here. come out here, because we didn't live here last yeah. this season yeah. when they came out here. Or yeah. no, we did. It was right when we moved here, but I was in Florida. Yep. That's when I went back to Florida for a week. So it was like never the worst seen time. D Wade live. Never will. Oh, oh damn, dude. Never will. That's rough. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna come back next year. Dirk's no, going to retire. One last, last dance. <laughs> One last, last dance. One mm-hmm. more dance. So what do you think about the Dirk situation? You mean like, is he going to retire? Yeah. For sure. I think so. Do you think there's animosity between him and Dwayne Wade? Uh, apparently there's a great story yeah. out there right now by Howard Beck. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, well, I, I listened to the Zach Lowe podcast did you yesterday it? where they talked yeah, about it. Yeah, I listened it. to it too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's, it's, it's pretty It's like cool. low-key, like... Yeah, maybe there used to be really bad blood, but they're kind of over it now, kind yeah. of thing. And it's, it's it's more on the Dirk side than it is on. Yeah, because D Wade was kind of a bully to him, <laughs> like him and LeBron like making fun of him for being sick. It's in like the it's like when yeah. you uh, it's like when you meet a dude that like and you like dated the same girl, mm-hmm. you know, and like you're you like you see him at the bar or something, you're like oh what's up, what's up, dude, and then like but like from across the room you're like. But then, like, the th- it turns out that, like, like kind of, kind of fuck that well, guy. But then, like, it, but then what happens guy. is, like, it turns out that he's actually kind of a cool dude. And later on, you're like, all right, fine. He, but he can be <laughs> cool all he wants. Like, no, that's what I'm trying to say, cool, though. But, but like, now, know. it's like you dated the same girl, but then, like, a year later, when you have a new girlfriend and you don't care anymore, you're not mad about that dude anymore. That's how they are now, I think. Yeah, you think? I think they like. I think that D Wade and Dirk kind of realized after enough time that the other person was a pretty good person. They're on the next stage. Yeah, Yeah. they're They're too old for that shit. Mm -hmm. I just they have such like a contrast in personalities. Yeah, they're very different. Mm -hmm. That it makes it like a little more intriguing because Dwayne Wade's like media presence and Mm -hmm. getting you know like. He's like a you know, fucking he's like, he's like he's a pseudo like, celebrity. Yeah. Like he's and, on the celebrity scale. And yeah. Dirk's like the he's Dirk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's, There's no other way to describe yeah. it. He's just like, up. Oh, this is what it is. This is this is what I do. Um, mm-hmm. Is Dirk question? married? Does yes. Dirk have kids? Yes. Yeah. Yes. A little Nowitzkis. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. Little baby Dirks. Yep. Their names are Dirk. Dirk and too. Dirk <laughs> and Dirkette. <laughs> Dirka. <laughs> uh, so yeah, back to your original question about the games tonight. You're so, obviously yeah. excited being a Florida State fan. Uh yeah. <laughs> like I said, I mean, like um, we were talking earlier. Like uh, this is a rematch of the Sweet 16 last year, uh, which is only the fourth time in the modern era that this has happened, and the previous three were split. 
Florida State won last year, made it to the lead eight, and played Michigan, which is funny because Michigan is the two seed mm-hmm. playing against Texas Tech. Yeah, yeah so if you win and they win, you'll play again. It'll be exactly. another rematch. That's um, weird. But yeah, they like Florida State was a, they were a nine Life simulation for sure. <laughs> yeah, Florida State was a nine seed last year, and Gonzaga mm-hmm. was a four seed, I believe. Yeah. Does the fact that Gonzaga blows it every year give you more confidence? <laughs> it's true. No, they always blow it. Well, right? um, Florida State has had a, a history of blowing it too. I mean, and yeah, but you're not a one seed, so like if you lose, you're, so, you're like you're you know quote unquote supposed to lose. So so it's like less. Uh, like stress. A, a lot of people have, t- have said that Florida State was underrated being a four seed. and they Well, especially a, after the ACC tournament. Yeah, been a three seed. But Florida State has a horrible record as a three seed. Mm-hmm. They've been a three seed twice that I know of. Once in 2013 and once two years ago in the Jonathan Isaac, Dwayne Bacon mm-hmm. year. Uh, and they lost in the second round. Oh, wow. Both to Xavier. Okay. Hmm. It's a traditional and basketball school. Last year, yeah, last year they beat Xavier without either of those two and any high profile really player um in the second round. Mm. So like who and Xavier was a one seed. Who are the best guys on FSU right now? The longest <sighs> boys. Cuz you want, you actually watch a lot more college basketball than us. Yeah. Like we yeah, are we're hip- we're we're uh we're what's the opposite of a hipster? Uh, Casual? Yeah, yeah, we're casuals. Yeah. We're for sure casuals. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, I, would, I would say even below that. Yeah, like, <laughs> um, basement level yeah. casual, yeah. Call it, like Duke fans. Literally. <laughs> hey man, I, I watched know, like I'm, three I'm, Gator games this we year. We can't even say Duke fans because like no, we like Zion yeah. and we like RJ and, yeah, and we yeah, like Cam. Cam. Yeah, yeah. And I, I like Trey. Yeah, Trey. Like Trey's Trey. cool. But the rest of them, the rest of those scrubs. What? You're not a big Delorean? Mr. Thing? Goldwire hit nine percent from three this year. What is that? He's got a cool um, name though. He does have a cool name. Yeah, uh, it's like a James Bond. Kevin Deloria is also a really cool name. Mm-hmm. Those, oh, they have cool names. Mm-hmm. What's their, their? Well, Jack White hasn't been playing, and he's he started out the season as a really good three point shooter off the bench. They need that. Why isn't he, is he hurt? I'm not sure. Or was Coach K like, get out of here? He's, he's Australian. I know that. He's Australian. His name's Jack Deloria. White? No, Jack White. Jack White. Oh, Jack White. Okay. Jack White. He's like a two, three kind of replacement player. Mm-hmm. And then you got, uh, oh shit, who's the other guy? The other white guy. Yeah, they got a bunch of them. It's Duke. <laughs> <laughs> a bunch of them for you to hate. Um, so, uh, probably the best prospect player uh, is Mufandu Calvin Galley, who is the. Uh, he's not can from you say Australia. That five times fast? No, he's actually from Canada. Okay, yeah, it makes sense. Can you say that five times fast? Yeah. Mm. Fee. <laughs> fee's with, fee's <laughs> what everyone calls him. Uh six ten, uh center, seven foot four wingspan. Ooh. Long um, boy. Oh. Magic are gonna draft is, him. Yep. <laughs> is Future the, point guard. <laughs> is the nephew of the Kami Matumbo. Oh. oh. Hmm. And he's he's their sixth man. Not even a starter. He leads the team in scoring. Whoa. Huh. In the two games they played in the tournament so far, he's averaging 22 points a he's game. He's a five that leads the team in scoring? Yeah. That's really weird. Uh, shoots a three. He's a stretch. He can he can, he can can uh, <coughs> guard all five positions. Hmm. I mean, he was jumping out on uh, John Morant mm-hmm. and locking him down. They had a good uh, game plan for him. Yeah, they did. Basically, they were, they it really was did. let the other people try. Don't let John Morant do anything. Exactly. <laughs> and and it, that's what UCF did against Duke, yeah, too. They of. said, uh, fuck Trey Jones. Let him do yep. whatever the fuck. And we're going to put you know, people down in the middle to block up the lane. I mean, Zion still had like 35. But. Yeah. He, I mean, <laughs> you can't stop Yeah, Zion. he's too good. <laughs> you, you cannot stop Zion. It's not possible. Um, Is there any world that you think that like Zion won't get picked number one? Nope. Oh, wait. <sighs> let me take that back. I do. If I, the Hawks get the number one pick. No. I mean, no, not the Hawks. I mean, the um, Suns. yeah, if the Suns get the number one pick, they might take Jock because they need a point guard yeah. so bad. I, I, yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. Yeah. And mm-hmm. we talked about that the other night. Right. I said that the only way is if... But even then, they might not do it because mm-hmm. Zion's so good. And it's not like Dragon Bender or Josh Jackson or any of these other big dudes they've drafted. have. Maybe DeAndre Ayton will be good, but... Mm-hmm. 
The only reason I think that they're more apt to do it is because they missed last year mm-hmm. and did not take Luca. Yeah, that's true. And, and Devin Luka Booker was needs the... a backcourt oh, friend. God, he needs been, it so bad. He's been playing so good yeah, he, recently. He's a, he dropped 52 nights yeah. in a row. Mm-hmm. Oh, Devin Booker? Yeah. Yeah. And one of them was a 30-point loss. We, they lost both of them. Yeah. With 50-plus points. But if you scored 59 and your team loses by 30, he had what's the, happening? <laughs> the, fir- the first one, he dropped like 59, and it was the fifth highest percentage of a player... Yeah, it was like in stupid game, efficient uh, versus like yeah, and and them losing. He had yeah. like sixty percent of, of their, their points. points. Jesus, was, yeah, it was crazy. They ended up with like eighty something points, I think, and he yeah. had fifty nine. Do you think that like he either a maybe? just like doesn't care about winning really, or he's just like numb to? Well, it? that's the argument about Devin Booker, right? It's like does his offense lead to winning basketball, or is he just on such a bad team that we can't tell? He's on such or, a bad team, like, you can't tell. Yeah, like, is it empty calories? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, is he, could he be Kobe? Or could he be, I don't know, who's like a, who's somebody that. Zach Levine. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. That's yeah. a perfect one. Yeah, Zach Levine. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I don't, they, I don't have really a comparison to him. He's, he's, mm. a, he's an odd player. Yeah, he's not like explosive the way that a lot of. He was young he's wings are like really good place to the rim though. He has really great, uh, like, uh, you know, great footwork and great. It's like the technique shit of playing basketball. He's great at. Mm-hmm. He's just a super great scorer. Could score yeah. from anywhere. Mm-hmm. Bad at defense though. That's mm-hmm. why they don't like yep. John Morant going there. Is he also a bad defender? Oh yeah, he does. He does. <sighs> I not feel like he play. shouldn't be bad at defense. Ex- exactly right. He's, like he's he's six three and he's, he's got, got like a solid s- size, six, seven wingspan. Mm-hmm. I think. Yeah. So like yeah. the measurables and he's they, super athletic. Yeah. Well, he's he's built like De'Aaron Fox. Yeah. 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 But, but De'Aaron Fox just, isn't a great defender either. He's he's not. But he's he's all right. Like yeah. Like, yeah. But I don't it, think it's like how Russ. It's like how Russ Westbrook is like when he wants to be, he's a good defender. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. This is the, the thing I like about the the John Morant um, Booker like that'd be, combination. That'd be really fun. It's because they're both like like John Morant at Murray State is like the shining star amongst crap, mm-hmm. and then like Devin That's Booker's what Devin kind Booker of the same is. way. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're like you put those two together, <laughs> and maybe it's fucking great. It's well, just I mean, a highlight reel. They'd like, be like, a really fun duo, and. Aiton looks like he could be good. I mean, it, like it's the joke is that every year people say that Phoenix is like three years away. Yeah. And then yeah. it's what's that old line that player like three years away from being three years away. That's like always seems to be what Phoenix is. I think Phoenix is like a really good example of like the the most negative aspects of about tanking. tanking. Yeah. Because yeah. they keep missing on their picks. But but like it's so, like but they, they also don't get the number one pick. It's ever. so See, hard though. Like I mean, like I think probably in everything in sports like. Drafting is the most. It's, there's no exact. There's no exact thing. science to it. Because mm-hmm. I like I, I've I've been looking back like on NFL drafts and NBA drafts and stuff like that. I'm not really major league baseball because <laughs> drafts are so confusing. Yeah, it's weird. And then um, you, everybody goes to the minors. Yeah, and yeah it's weird. And it was like, and like just the amount of misses mm-hmm. that there are is it's crazy astronomical. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, and then you know you find Giannis is at 15. It doesn't mm-hmm. make any sense. Yeah, and like I mean, because like probably the most one of the most polarizing I mean, besides like Greg Oden and mm. uh, had a uh, uh, Durant um, was the Sabonis or not Sabonis uh, what's his name Darko Darko yeah, yeah mm. Darko in the middle between LeBron and uh, Carmelo and, and Bosh and Wade but yeah and they were just like that was such a stacked draft yeah. and they're like they just who, who drafted whiffed who drafted Marco or Darko Philly Philly yeah Blew it. Yeah. Blew it, Philly. Yeah. I mean, even you go back to the, the Shaq draft, mm-hmm. uh, or not Shaq draft, the 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 next year. Uh, Penny? Chris Chris Weber was drafted number mm-hmm. one, and then you had Sean Bradley by Philly, Jeez. drafted number two, and then Penny Hardaway drafted number three by Golden State, and then uh, Traded. Golden State and and the, them flipped. But they pulled a, so, a Hawks Mavericks. No, they got three number ones. Oh wow! Yeah, dang. Mm-hmm. It was That's a crazy. ridiculous a trade. Uh, and Penny ended up being better than Chris Webber. But Sorry, like, Chris Webber, you're a Hall of Famer. An- <laughs> uh, another thing that like I think about a lot, like like especially with what the Magic are doing this year, mm-hmm. um, and how different it has, like this year has been uh, to years past. Um, 
uh, just as far as the intention of winning and playing with a purpose um, and how that influences your players. Because a lot of times, like just d drafting the player isn't enough. Mm -hmm. It's establishing no. the environment for yeah. that player in order mm -hmm. to succeed, right? Like uh, not only like in uh, development of their skills, but putting them in the situations where they're going to be tested and challenged and putting them through that and having them comfortable in, in uh, pressure type situations where they have to win. You know, like John Isaac, right? <clears throat> just uh sort of went through that with probably like the most uh high pressure game that he's played in his career against the heat mm -hmm. you know this was uh, yeah, he played great in the second half uh, yeah uh, yeah uh and he struggled really bad in the, in first, the first half, half yeah. um but it, like i think he started off over 11 four. in the third quarter yeah he went over four and then he went eight for nine mm -hmm. uh in the second half uh just and fucking a lot of that is you know the, the veterans that he had around him. I think him, it's the, just all the presence of Michael Carter Williams. Absolutely. absolutely. That's what we put it every all time, on. Every time we get a new point guard, He's we the go goal. on a, a five-game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, <coughs> MCW is great. I fucking love him. <laughs> but, like, but what, what I'm saying is like uh, it's so anti what the Suns are doing, yeah. right? The Suns are like in this perpetual fucking hell of – just sucking, sucking dick. Well, uh, it's, <laughs> it's what the Kings have been, right? But the Kings credit De'Aaron Fox with changing it. So how much do you think that it's uh, not only De'Aaron Fox, but not having their own pick? There is, they have oh, zero I mean, that might have incentive. had inten inten incentive to just not worrying about losing games. Exactly. But I also think that since Dave Yeager got there, right. I mean, he was the grit and grind, grind guy right. in Memphis. So mm -hmm. he, like, he knows how to set a culture. Mm -hmm. And then... They credit De'Aaron Fox's like attitude with changing the sort of mentality of the whole franchise mm -hmm. and, and wanting to win. He, ch yeah. he channeled that inner Dragon Ball. Yeah, Z. exactly. <laughs> he went yeah. fucking Super Saiyan. Yeah. <laughs> and then you know they made the. Tr I don't even know if they should keep Harrison Barnes, but like they they're making moves to <sighs> He's be the guy winners. Who's disappointed me a little bit, Harrison Barnes. Yeah. He was he was great in college, mm -hmm. and I just wasn't never, he like a number three pick or something. Yeah, he was yeah. he was high. I just never thought he was in the right situation. Mm -hmm. Like him on the Warriors in the beginning, just like well, never really made. He sex. was too far. He was so far down the food chain on the Warriors, yeah. and then like going the Mavericks and he won a <sighs> ring, right? Yeah, yeah, he won a ring with yeah. them the first year. Yeah, first year. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, going the Mavericks. Like I don't know. Like the Mavericks are a weird club to me. Like I don't always. Yeah, don't they're always they're like sense. a transitioning squad. Yeah, they're gonna but be I'm, interesting I'm, when they I'm have the unicorn out there, though. Yeah, I'm super happy to see like Luca and Porzingis mm -hmm. play on the same team, and they're gonna have. Well, no, actually, no, their draft pick's going away this year. So it's gonna go to the Hawks. Oh yeah, yeah, because right. of the swap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's a what top ten protect. Probably something like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, because that they have the Hawks getting like. Um, like two really good three and D players mm -hmm. in the like the mock drafts. Um, yeah, I can't. Uh, DeAndre, they, they, DeAndre, need... they have like DeAndre Hunter and I can't remember the other one that are like. The Hawks need like as much size well, around yeah, Trey Young. Size they have shooting. like two like big like six eight six nine yeah. wing players to go with him and Herder, and then like. Yeah, like yeah, Herder's weird. Like Herder's been solid this year, but he's not a guy that you I think would project to be their starter down the road. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's a guy that you imagine like he can come off the bench and get you you know fifteen to twenty points sometimes. I, just, I hate Trey Young's game. Really? I really? Do. Really? I really do. Why is that? I think he's so selfish and just like. Huh. He, he so you guys talk about John Wall with the mm -hmm. uh, assist to get assists. Right. I think that's Trey Young. Really. I really do. I kind of disagree with you. I feel like I feel like Trey Young's like a, a just a really good passer. Yeah, he's I just, a great he, passer. No, he's a good passer, uh -huh. but I think he like he, tries to. He pad does it for stats. stats. Okay. Yeah, and his forty foot threes that he takes mm -hmm. they're just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he makes them. Yeah, but he probably doesn't make that. You know, he doesn't make them the, at a high enough clip yeah. for the amount that he takes. Just he's like he like wants to be a highlight player, and that's all he is. You know, he's. There's yeah, a, but there's a reason why Allen Iverson never won a championship in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So this is an interesting comp, like Trey Young and Allen Iverson. Yeah, huh? That he was Allen Iverson was one of the greatest NBA players ever. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, the dude, like, there's the conversation about the Lance Stevenson versus, like, the crossover and all that shit. The, there's only one true crossover in the history <laughs> yeah. of the NBA, and that's Allen Iverson. Yeah. Jamal I mean, Crawford, he, Jay Crossover. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, he took down Michael Jordan on a crossover. Right. One of the all-time, I mean, the all-time greatest player in the NBA. Mm-hmm. And they, I think they went to, what, one conference final, maybe, in his right. time? They, they never made it to the NBA finals, mm-hmm. I don't think. It's because he was, that's the player he was. He was a showboat. He wanted everything. To be I don't know much about him. the teams that were around him, so I can't really. Well, I mean, he had like I think like his best player that probably played with, with him was like Dikembe Iggy. Mutombo. Did he right? play with Iggy early? Early Iggy? Yeah, he did. Early Andre yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, like that's he, he, that's the the player Trey Young reminds me. He's mm-hmm. never going to be a championship player. He'll be really good and mm-hmm. have a lot of great stats, but he's never going to build that team around him. So you don't you don't think that he could be like a Steph Curry type? No. Not at all. Even if they they're like complete construct, op- they're a... complete opposites in a personality standpoint. Really? I mean, even at, even at Oklahoma, I watched him a lot at Oklahoma uh-huh. at his, his only year in college, and he'd have like super high games and he'd have super low games. But just his mannerisms, watching him play, like 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 he doesn't miss a shot. He's like, just I don't know. It's it's weird. Like he's like a little kid. Mm-hmm. Like he. I pouts. mean, he is. <laughs> he, he, he is. He is. I mean, he's nineteen <laughs> years old. But I'm just saying, like. He like like pouts around like a five year old. Mm. Him and uh, him and DJ Augustine fucking got into it last time they played. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, he he's yeah he's a controversial. But Alan, yeah, like I said, like the draws more compared. Allen Iverson was the same thing, mm. you know. Yeah, just, yeah. I'm, I don't like talking about like players' body language. I think it's kind of weird. Why is that? It's just like if you had a camera on you at all moments, right? Yeah. No. You know, it's 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 gonna look at times like you're disinterested or like yeah. you don't care about things. Like, yeah. it's just just because someone maybe sits. People said about Hassan Whiteside all the time, especially yeah. last year when he had all his injuries and he wasn't playing well. It's like, oh, his body language is horrible. He doesn't want to be there. All this stuff. It's like you don't know that mm. just by looking at someone because there's cameras following them. Even all the time. with the the big thing about LeBron sitting at the, yeah, they get, the bench. Yeah. I mean, like that was blown up. Now LeBron's a little bit different though, because Le- like when LeBron does stuff like that, he does things for a reason. He's smart enough to know what's going to happen. But you could also, like, look at LeBron, uh, you know, have a camera on him at all times, mm-hmm. and there's going to be times where he looks disinterested. Or, you know, when he gets caught taking plays off on defense all the time now, and he's because he's old, well, and he takes he's, plays off on yeah, defense. he's 35 years yeah. old. <laughs> and he's been on how many all yeah. NBA? Like, how many like, extra seasons <laughs> has he played for with all his playoff games? Like, yeah. come on. So I have, a, I have a weird theory is that LeBron wanted to miss the playoffs this year. Because he can, f- f- so he can film Space Jam. <laughs> Besides Space Jam, just like this will be his first, on top of just the regular, you know, the, the you know, the wear and tear, yeah. But all the like uh, USA basketball games he's played and all that, like yep. he just needed wanted, a break. Wanted a break. I wouldn't. And this I would was a never, good time I would to never say that LeBron James wants to not make the playoffs, but I think he could use it as an opportunity for yeah. sure. I think he'll make the most out of having more time to rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think he comes back next year as like a completely different player. They're gonna be fine. I think people overblow it because it's the Lakers and they talk about them way too much and it's way too big a deal. Yeah. Well, and they have if Lance he hadn't Stevenson. missed eighteen games, they'd be in the playoffs. That's yeah. that's where I draw the line. And Lance Stevenson, <laughs> that fucking highlights the other night. <laughs> he who, stepped who, on the foot. Who, oh yeah, he was. Uh, what yeah, was the, w- the Wizards. Yeah. yeah. So he he shook up Jeff Green. Yeah. Jeff Green. Put Jeff Green in a fucking alternate Ooh, dimension. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you see, did you see the, the 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 recourse to that though? Like Jeff Green last night, like posterized somebody. I think it was um, I think they played the Sixers. It was uh, what's his name, the backup center, Bolden, Jonah Bolden. No. Oh, Boban. Yeah, Boban. Yeah. And he, I mean, just dunked, he dunked on all, Boban. Oh all, my god, all over him. Don't do and, that to Boban. And he did the same shimmy. He's delicate. He's a national treasure. <laughs> he did the same shimmy that like Lance oh, Stevenson right. did, yeah. and, and their and their bench like went crazy. Yep. Just like I was like that so, Laker, that big the Laker bench Boban, reaction was amazing. Now Boban has to go dunk on someone. <laughs> yeah. And then do the shimmy because yeah. I want to see a Boban shimmy. I don't think he can. Oh, he can. I, <laughs> I feel he like can. he could. It's Boban. Boban can do Boban anything. Can do Boban anything Boban wants. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> so, uh, fucking, let's, let's, let's not talk about the Lakers. Let's talk about other fucking NBA shit that no one talks about. Uh, fucking. Uh, the Grizzlies? Mm. Yeah, let's talk about the Grizzlies. 
Mike Conley's great. <laughs> That's it. Enough said. <laughs> Didn't uh, well, he just broke a Actually, record? Yeah, right? he he, just broke... he passed Marcus Gasol yesterday for most points in franchise history. Damn. Now, like the Grizzlies aren't a Super Bowl franchise or anything, but so they're actually talking about him as a uh, kind of long shot All NBA player. Yeah, third team. Yeah. yeah, potentially. Really? Yeah. Yeah, they were talking about that with uh, Zach Lowe and mm-hmm. uh, uh, Howard Beck yesterday. Because they they went into you know whole debate on whether like the guard Parker, thing. Basically, yeah. like it's basically, the, are you going to put Russell Westbrook on your third team? Is basically what it comes down to. So the only, yeah, and listen to all these like. People talk about the all-NBA team. The only thing I'm kind of upset about is that nobody even talks about Vucevic. Yeah, but it's because centers only get three spots. I know. If there were six spots, he'd probably get one. Mm-hmm. That but he's also the like the 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 quietest. The quietest kind of, like, yeah. But how many how many of the the, the three? Because it's you know it's Embiid, it's Embiid Jokic. and Jokic are guaranteed, and then it's like uh, does Kat, Towns get in? It's Cat or Gobert yeah. are the mm-hmm. ones that are sort of the right. yeah. fight for three. How many of them are averaging a double double? Uh, Joel definitely is. Jokic yeah. is probably close to a triple double. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. Yeah, I, I think would. Cat has been destroying. Yeah, like he like he has been, 30, 15, in, yeah. in eight games, like constantly. Yeah, I think Joel is the only person that has more double doubles than Vucci. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I mean, just watching that that game, I would guess that Sixers. all three of them are averaging or close to averaging a double double. But yeah. like the the the. Prime like difference why like one uh, the difference is like why Vucci doesn't get a lot of attention because uh, he's, he's on the magic. Yeah. Well, a he's on the magic. <laughs> a he's on the magic. But B like just the nature of his game. Yeah, Joel. Yeah, it's not can, ex- like the, like what highlights are you gonna make of Vucci? Like him doing a like you're gonna a put four a nice foot, post hook on somebody. Oh, yeah, a four, a four foot hook shot. <laughs> like, just you're, like seven of them. You're, you're, gonna, you're gonna put that on House of Highlights. You're gonna get yeah. a nice pick and pop three. He's gonna put a spin move on somebody. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful game. He just to, gets it done, but but not to the casual. Fans. No, yeah, for sure. No. Yeah, he's not like Joel where he's dunking on people in the post yeah. and yeah, or like Carl Anthony Towns where yeah. he's sprinting down the court like he's a guard. Yeah, and or Joel- Jokic who's just flop like flailing around and hitting uh, game winners and shit, uh, flailing around, incredible or, passing. Yeah, or uh, throwing the craziest passes yeah. like his. Like it's not even just like like his, the function of his passes. Like oh, I can get the ball into this place mm-hmm. at this time. It's like the way he does yeah, it. It's that's crazy. So fucking it's insane weird. how good he is. Like it's like, uh, it's like I don't know how to like compare this. Uh, it's like I don't know like Keith Jardine. You know what I mean? Like like he has like such a, like a strange style, but it ends up being effective, mm-hmm. and it like makes it even more enticing to watch. Well, I mean, if you watch his game winners, they're like that. It's literally just like him being like. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. throwing it up and he goes in. It's, yeah. he, it's weird, but it gets it done. Mm-hmm. I don't know how good they're going to be. I wonder how good they're going to be in the playoffs, the Nuggets. When the rest, like, if they have to play, I think first round they'll be, they'll be fine. But, I mean, even then, the West is deep. What if they get the Thunder in the first round? Right. We and the Thunder right now at the they're eighth like seed. Eighth, seventh or eighth or something like that. No, they're, yeah, they're eighth right now, yeah. I think. Which um, like Clippers, that's kind of disappointing. Are, like they were sort of like they've been my, on a bad month basically. That's well, George a, hurt his fucking shoulder. Yeah. That's a bad eight seed to play though. Yeah, because yeah. if they're if they're healthy and locked in, if Russ if Russ shoots well for a series, which I mean you can talk shit about his shooting numbers all season. Don't tell me he can't get hot yeah. whenever. Yeah. Like if come they, on, like if they overtake like the Warriors and take that number one seed, mm-hmm. you get like that versus. The Thunder and the even first if you draw round, a team like, like that's the worst first round. Match even if you, you draw a team like have. the Jazz or something like the West, no matter who you get, is a tough out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to deal with Rudy Gobert for a whole first round series mm-hmm. and Donovan Mitchell yeah. in playoff mode, especially yeah, like a uh, yeah, like Golden State's pretty thin right now mm-hmm. at the uh, at the five. I mean. You are well, disrespecting Andrew Bogut, sir. No, I'm not. <laughs> no. Same time. What, the, the has draft, he even the, played? I don't even know. Yeah. He has. He has? The, the, yeah. Yo, he's hot off an MVP season in Australia. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he's just like Luca, guys. I, he's I, just I, like Luca. I guess, I guess there was like a moment between um, Bogut and like Kevin Durant or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there was like a weird set yeah, in the screen yeah. and, and Durant was like, what, the, what, what are you doing? doing? And Bogut was like, this is how we did it when I played <laughs> I set screens for people. <laughs> Hard screens. That's yeah. what I do. He's a super good screener. Um, the same thing. The, the trailblazers. Uh, trailblazers. They're, now they're in trouble with, yeah. with that horrible injury to Nurk. Mm-hmm. Did you watch it? 
No, I didn't watch it. I didn't look it up. I have Is a it, sick fascination with watching those. Like you have to watch it. I have to watch it once. Right. It's gross. Really gross. Yeah. Uh, worse than Karis Levert. Uh, yeah, I Al- think so. Because like, not Alex- only not only did it like pop, but it stayed like at a weird Ooh. angle. Like, like when he was on the ground. Yeah. Alex Smith level. Yeah, kind of. Ugh. It's the same injury. Yeah. The compound. Yeah, he has compound two compound fractures. Yikes. Yeah, that's. Good Hopefully, he doesn't get Alex. Alex Smith had that horrible. His surgery didn't go well, we and like he got an five. infection and stuff. Yeah, and he might never play football again. It's fucking rough. Yeah, it's crazy. And Nurk was playing really well too. Yeah, mm-hmm. this was like his breakout season. I mean, it was. He was. And Damien's been amazing this year. Yeah, and you still got hey, CJ McCollum still out. Yeah, know? he should be back soon. I think. They're really thin, though. Like, who's their centers behind? Well, I guess they signed in as Cantor. Yeah. And they have, like, <laughs> what, like, Myers Leonard? Mm-hmm. And this Collins? Yeah, Zach, Zach Collins, Collins play center? Yeah, Zach Collins. Because I'm pretty Collins. sure. They're uh, saying Collins is probably going to play a lot because Cantor's so limited on the defensive end. Yeah. Uh, limited is, yes. like, an understatement. Yes, yes. That's being nice. Yeah. I mean, he's a nice guy. He's one in Turkey or whatever. Yo, there's some crazy <laughs> shit with his personal life. He'll oh, get yeah. straight up killed if he goes to Turkey. <laughs> yeah, fucking former Magic players had to get him, dude. Fucking Hito Turkoglu. That's He's so like, crazy, uh-huh. dude. That's so yeah. crazy. You know, apparently, Hito Turkoglu. Hito like, like works like, in the government in Turkey and mm-hmm. is like part of the decision making yeah. process of that. It's nuts. So uh, like, uh, or he fucking, has to like carry out the orders yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Like, and I saw an Instagram comment that was like, like, uh, well, actually, Ennis Cantor uh, supports a terrorist group, and that's why, like, there's nothing wrong going on with Turkey right now. And I'm like, yeah, you're probably a good source. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sources, bro? Sources? You got a link link to a good uh, accredited article there, buddy? <laughs> no? Okay, cool. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you brought this question up mm-hmm. uh, yesterday. Uh, we're going to go to the magic. Okay. If Markel Fultz is mm-hmm. healthy mm-hmm. next year, is he going to start? Yeah. I, I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, and I, 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 I brought this up to you. Like, I don't fully understand the magic's identity right now. I think they're in this like weird mix because you got like Vucci. Who's like, a half court player that mm-hmm. it slows it down. He's great. Fournier is similar, and and can dish it out and stuff like that. And you got all these like big players. You know, AG is like the only way to really you know kind of talk about him is he's an athlete. Like mm-hmm. he's yeah, he can shoot the three. Yeah, he can shoot a jump up. You know, your, your jump shot and stuff like that. But he's he's better in like the fast break kind of things. Mm-hmm. And, and Jonathan Isaac's the same way, big, tall, athletic. And they're like, really improving his shooting. though. Yeah. And, and, and they're both in this kind of like weird, like they're hybrid three fours, mm-hmm. right? you know, like where Jonathan Isaac kind of plays the three because he's a little more athletic than AG. Is. Yeah. He basically plays the three because AG can't guard them. Yeah. It's they weird. Tried a, you know, they tried AG the year before at the yeah. three and he just couldn't cut it. Um, but like a lot of, like a lot of that, like, it's kind of like, well, okay. How, like, how much is, you know, one person a three and one person a four? Like, yeah, you know, no, like, like they're, they're, I, cause I'll, I'll follow like, like position with basketball. Yeah. Well, but no, like no, a lot I of agree. times Jonathan Isaac will be listed at the four. Like I think yeah. for a majority part of the season, uh, Jonathan Isaac has been listed at the four recently. They've been listing him as a three. Yeah. It's kind of weird. Like, like, I don't know why they would, and it's, it, they're, they're, they're too similar. They're like. Like you got a point guard, you got a shooting guard, you got two wings, and you got a center. Mm-hmm. Like that's that's kind of how they are. Or you call it three wings. Yeah. Basically. Now it's basically you have a guard, three wings, and a big. Which I mean, yeah. Fournier's good, he, but he's a little. He's limited. very inconsistent. Yeah. I think that um, he's like. He should be a six man. Well, I, him and Terrence Ross are like both inconsistent in different ways. Yeah. Like Terrence Ross is inconsistent. In the, he's in, a streaky shooter. In, in that he's a streaky shooter, whereas like Evan is fairly consistent in his shot, but it's like his decision-making, yeah. which is inconsistent. Like he'll just make really dumb plays. Like, mm-hmm. and it's usually when he's trying to be overly aggressive mm. It's like when he kind of is trying yeah. to be Terrence Ross or whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, but when he's playing conservative and he kind of just like, like, he's okay, just within like, himself in yeah, the offense, like yeah. I'm just going to give you a little move here and then fucking cut to the basket, mm-hmm. make a pass here. I'm going to mm-hmm. fucking, you know, get whatever. Like, uh, it, it, when he was playing conservative, like his 
because he's so skilled. I think that fucking Evan Fournier is so fucking skilled. Um, and when he's playing conservative, it just like sort of comes to the top. You know? Yeah. I just like, like the magic are so front court stacked. Yeah. It bothers me a little bit. Yeah. Well, I think that part of like what you're talking about is just, you're seeing them two years into a new front yeah, office. So yeah. Like but it was they just, haven't had enough time to fully put the, build the team they want to build. And, and the last two drafts too, like, cause I mean, they Oh took, yeah. You can see what they want. They took it's Isaac, obvious. They <laughs> took Isaac and they took Bamba, but those were big, heavy, drafts long they there wasn't like i mean you're talking the, the only two point guards in those two drafts like last year well, i mean there specifically was, a lot of, was colin sexton and trey young and i kind like, of luca but there was a lot of there was a lot yeah, of point guards yeah. in, in but john but Luca Isaac's was draft. way high yeah. they, they, i mean the magic were at eight yeah. so like they weren't getting luca mm-hmm. that wasn't happening their two in their range was trey young and and colin, colin sexton. sexton yeah and i like colin sexton's game and he's actually done very well he's in shooting the second really half. great yeah. this year but like I was so off on Trey Young, like I've said before, right. I did. You, did I they both like get drafted him. before the Magic picked? Yes. Mm, well, not not Con Sexton. No. Sexton was Trae on Young. the board. Trae Sexton he's was... too little though. Con Sexton for John Hammond. Yeah, six three. Yeah, he's too little. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, he's, six he's, six he's, only. <laughs> he's the bigger. He's the bigger of the two. I mean, mm-hmm. Trey Young. Well, yeah, Trey Young is small. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's small. Um, and that curly hair. The, the year that Jonathan Isaac was drafted, though, there was, that was like a point guard heavy draft because you yeah. had that was the year of Markel, Lonzo, De'Aaron Fox, Dennis mm-hmm. Smith Jr. The only one that we really had a chance to get was like Dennis Smith Jr. So like I don't think he doesn't fit. I just well I also just he's don't, not a true point guard. He's I, he's a two in my opinion. I also just don't think that the front office drafts for a position. I think yeah, that they, they draft believe for, in yeah. drafting for talent. Mm-hmm. I, I, they want the best player on the board. At a certain point, though. Like well, yeah, you when, can't when just keep you not taking that? front court players. See, like, I don't know, man. This know. this year is a really big wing heavy mm-hmm. draft. I mean, because like all the top guys, because even even John Moran, I think he could play it too. Oh, he could. Yeah, he could definitely with play his it, size. Like, yeah. But I mean, like Cam Reddish and and uh, uh, Zion and all those yeah, like, guys. Like Zion is is a hybrid. Zion weird. plays like a big, but he's built like a like he's as tall as a wing. He's he's yeah. weird. He's a, he's probably gonna be a power forward in the NBA. I mean, he's he's a stretch, small ball. He's a, he's a stretch four. He can't shoot though, so he's not stretch. Oh, he's, he's been a, shooting pretty good lately. Uh, I mean, he'll develop a shot, I yeah. think, but or he'll like, be have a chance to. But this, this he'll is, be a, like a he'll be like a starting four and a small ball five, I think. Th- this which is that guy scary. like in the last three years grew five inches in a hundred pounds. Zion, yeah, Jesus. He was a sophomore in high school. He was thick. Six, he was six foot three. And 195. And he was already dunking like crazy. Yeah, 185 yeah. pounds. That's nuts. And then in like a year time. How's he so heavy? Just fucking know. muscle. Big bones. Muscle. Yeah. He said he, he said when he got done growing all the growing penguins were done, done he felt like Superman. <laughs> yeah. Cause he could I, jump. Do you think I probably that, would like, fucking feel like Superman too. Do you think that like Zion being so good has hurt RJ and Cam Reddish's draft status? Yes. I don't know. Before the season... It was RJ one, Zion two, Cam right. three to six. Yep. John Morant wasn't in the mix. In the all. mix, really. Now it's Zion one, John Morant two, RJ three, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cam like five, six. Mm-hmm. Cam might fall all the way to like eight or something. But I mean, he hasn't been a great shooter, and that's supposed to be his thing. But I mean, these are. You I hope remember, to God, the, he falls to the fucking fifteenth pick. <laughs> yeah. These are guys that were, you know, I mean. Uh, R.J. Barrett is like the face of Canada. I mean, his his godfather, New is Maple Steve, Jordan, is Steve Nash. Mm-hmm. Like for real, I didn't yes, know that. like yeah. legitimately, his That's godfather crazy. is Steve Nash. His his dad. Wait, is, you mean the soccer guy, Steve Nash? Yeah, the guy that talks about <laughs> soccer. <laughs> the guy, like his his dad is the head of Cannibal, yeah, like Canada, like basketball association. Jeez, um, I didn't know this that. guy's used to being the player. Like mm-hmm. he plays, and, and and Cam Reddish as well. He was a point guard. In high school, yeah. So these guys, you, they're used to having the ball in their hands so much, and then you put this like All collaboration together, of these yeah. three players, and like, and then you throw Trey Jones in, who is the point guard, exactly. So it's like and even more, like, yeah. and you just, Zion's game just like elevates theirs just a little bit more that they take have like a backseat. Yeah. Well, and it's also just like a completely different situation for yeah. all three of them, yeah. you know, yeah. cause like they're used to just being the guy. And obviously like Zion is still the guy, but mm-hmm. like he has never played with uh, th- those kind of players of that caliber yeah. before, you know, and it's just like any other fucking college player though. Like it's a completely different situation. Yo, I wish, I wish and it's that... really hard to evaluate a player just off of one year of college. That's true. I wish that 
Zion and Cam had like a Joel and B JJ Reddick two man game. I feel like that could be so nasty. You said RJ and Zion. What'd you say? Zion and Cam. Oh, okay. Had like a Joel and B JJ mm. Reddick two man game where they're like running circles <laughs> around Joel and shit to get open threes. Like mm. that'd be so crazy. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, JJ went to Duke, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's a Apparently he po- uh, played People fucking. Fucking hate JJ Reddick. I don't think as much anymore. But like no, when he no, went to the Duke, reason why no one when hates, he went yeah. to Duke and early, I think in his NBA career, people fucking hated. The him. reason why people don't hate JJ Reddick anymore is because of his Grayson podcast. Allen. <laughs> oh, no. because of Grayson Allen. Because everyone yeah. forgot about the yeah. shit that JJ. Well, I mean, did. that's probably like every white dude at Duke, though. It's like people hated. Christian Leitner and then who showed up and then you know there's somebody new yeah, shows up and they forget true. the one before mm-hmm. and then you know the they most about, recent, like the there isn't Hills. really somebody like that's the weird thing about like there's usually someone on Duke that people hate Duke is, has kind of like a Patriots vibe where that's like you yeah, find a reason to so hate good. someone on the They've team been so yeah. good and then- yeah but they don't really have that that you're like people don't hate Zion he's too no. like he's likable mm-hmm. He yeah, just he plays really hard yeah and he's really good how I mean like they had Wendell Carter Jr. and um What's his face last year? I Marvin mean, the, Bagley. Yeah, Marvin Bagley. Yeah. I mean, they were like the the twin towers of like. Yeah, and the then before basketball. that, like a lo- not know. long before that, it was like Justice Winslow and Jaw uh, Julie Okafor. Like, yeah. How crazy it is! But like, Gr- Grayson Allen was there during those times. Right. Yeah. To be the dude everyone hated. Yeah, <laughs> I hated him. How fucking <laughs> crazy is it that like having a motor? Is like an aspect, like it, it's like having a good jump shot almost. Like, yeah. like when you're evaluating prospects, that's like, a a motor is a huge thing in football. Yeah, huge thing, especially if you play on defense. Right. I, I yeah, I, I but I, I think it's probably a bigger factor in in basketball because the the, the way the game speed is. Mm-hmm. Like in football, and this is like an argument that I would like go against. Also, is that like. It starts and stops. It starts and mm-hmm. stops. Yeah. It starts and stops. Whereas basketball is not like, and it's, it's, and it's not even on the same level as soccer, where it's like you literally run miles. Like, yeah, you know, um, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a big thing. I mean, that was one of the big questions on uh, Aiton last year on whether mm-hmm. he had mo- motor right. to not see a little this year. Yeah, Nar- yep. yeah, mm-hmm. Narcy little. Even Mo Bamba got out. Yeah, Mo, yeah. And, and for big guys, I think it's always more of a question because. Mm-hmm. They're big. They get tired and, quicker. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of them are raw. Yeah. You know, they're raw prospects. Even, like, the guy that the Florida State has that we're, you know, we're going to go see here in a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, Chris Kumaji. He's out of Chad. Like, he's six foot. The country four. Chad or a yeah. person named no. Chad? Yeah, he, country, <laughs> country Chad. Uh, he's six foot four. He's, like, the, the second biggest guy in the NCAA. And seven foot four. Se- seven foot four, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, he's yeah. the second – Everyone else is less than six foot. I could play college basketball. Seven foot four. Um, but yeah, he's like, because he, he's awkward. Like mm, he's yeah. not, like you know, same thing with uh, the kid from UCF. Taco Fall. Yeah, Taco yeah. Fall. I he's, watched the. I watched a little bit of their first round game against VCU, and then I watched. We watched the last few minutes of the Duke game, mm-hmm. and like I was like, this Taco Fall dude. He's like clearly a presence. He's huge, but he just fouls everybody. Everything that he's, moves. He's lumbering. Yeah. it's not like smooth. Yeah. you know, it's just you know, it's mm-hmm. it's a. Transition. Somebody, somebody like posited the question, like, does he have a place in the NBA? And it was like, I don't know anymore. Like, you know, can what he I mean? do it like a Boban like, thing? Can he be like Boban? Exactly, yeah. that's what I thought. Can he be like Boban? Yeah. But Boban, like, Boban's got a, like a push shot. Like, Boban can step outside a little bit. He's, he's, he's got a little. He bit hit of a three the other night. He's got a little bit of Jokic in. Him. Yeah, a like bit. where he can yeah. like he can fool yeah. he can fool on you. Yeah. Um, yeah, and obviously he's the best shooter in the yep. the NBA. Hundred percent yeah. three point shooter. He's developed his a hundred percent. I don't know if he actually is, or if that's. I know it's the I first idea. one he ever hit. No, Has he ever it. taken another one? I, mean, I don't he's know. He's made more than Ben Simmons. <laughs> like, that's I mean, true. When, when they, <laughs> that's when true. They brought Kumanji and like the the coaching staff actually threw like tennis balls and footballs to him because mm-hmm. he had no hand eye coordination. Wow, that's so What's weird. Ever? He only played soccer growing up. Okay, he never yeah. played basketball. He had and great like, foot eye yeah. coordination, <laughs> but they, like they were just like practice. They're just like do do do. Yeah, do do. That's funny. <laughs> it's nuts how like. NBA scouts and college scouts find these dudes. They're just yeah. like, they literally scour the world looking for giants. Right. They're like, they go look for Bigfoot. They're like, go find, <laughs> go find the guy. <laughs> That's what the, the NBA Afri- Africa thing is really cool. Did you hear about that? I think it was like last month. Yeah. Um, they're going to set up a league in Africa. Huh. 
and it's going to be like linked. a G League, but it's kind like of. In Africa. I think it's more, more like probably NFL Europe was kind of. Okay. Pre- yeah, yeah. Previously. Okay. It's kind of like the China League or like yeah. like the European leagues are. It's similar to that. Okay. Where it's its own it's like, league, but like linked to the NBA. And right. It seems like they're they're bringing a lot of more players out of there. Yeah, for sure. Like, for like sure. The, the like, basketball like, without borders thing. Yeah. yeah like I mean, really they're basically doing that, but making it permanent. Like okay. Florida State's done it. Like they've had three or four guys in the last four years that they right. brought mm-hmm. over. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I mean, there's clearly genes there for it. There's giant dudes. Mm. I like, think that, yeah, the biggest issue is like, and it's probably why they're setting this up is that, these guys aren't exposed. Yeah, they want to start mm-hmm. teaching them when they're yeah. young, so mm-hmm. they they learn yeah. you know how to yeah. properly play. They play soccer. Although you could make the argument that America being involved in that is bad because of AAU and how, like the the weird dichotomy between European players and American players and the the skill level thing. But I mean that's a, it's but, a, its own debate. Yeah, but I but I feel like you know not even playing the game at all. Oh like no, if obviously you're, if it's if better. You're judging no, it obviously, obviously, yeah. But like, because like, yeah. not everybody like, is a Joel. Do you approach can... it from the the aspect of the way the Europeans approach it or? Right. I think the problem in America is that there's, like, I, there's just too much money involved in it. Yeah. At a certain point, like the youth sports thing needs to be about teaching them how to be good at the sport and not about winning. Like, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why you guys are going to watch a movie. <laughs> <laughs> After I win the bracket challenge. <laughs> are you talking about blue chips? Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's pretty. If much you win the bracket challenge, oh, I'm gonna win sir. the bracket challenge. If That's you a- win <laughs> the bracket challenge. Hey, man, I'm, I, I missed some first round upsets. But uh, most of my bracket is actually intact at this point. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I have two teams. That you're I, holding that on I to UNC. Out. I got I got 14 out of 16 Sweet 16. Yeah, I teams. think I'm like something like yeah. 13 or 14 right now because it, it gives you your highest projection. I still have the highest project, like not projection, but mm-hmm. the potential pro- potential like points. Potential, yeah. I have the highest. Although I'll, I'll give it to you, you you and your random ass Oregon pick worked. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. you're just Welcome. going like this with your bracket. Welcome to my brain. <laughs> Welcome to my brain. Randomly, you said Bull Bull plays for them. He's hurt, but I don't care. Mm-hmm. I'm still going to pick them. <laughs> you know why? Because ducks. Ducks. Yeah, exactly. That's Nike. <laughs> ducks. Yep, Phil Knight. All right, so we're, we should probably wrap this up. Yeah. Um, I don't know what time is it. Uh, uh, almost yeah, almost yeah. 154. Yeah. Um, so we're going to ask you something that we ask all the guests that come on to the podcast. Okay. Uh, so... What advice would you give to the 14-year-old version of yourself? There's only one thing. Yeah. Don't smoke. <laughs> Don't smoke. <laughs> That's really good. Uh, That's good. Yeah. No, if there's, if there's one thing, like, drugs. I mean, we've talked about all the decisions I made throughout my life and, right. and how they've led to me, you know, led me to where I am personally. And I'm very happy where I am personally mm-hmm. and in you know, my situation. Uh, so yeah, it'd be like, uh, someone hands you a cigarette, tell them to fuck off and uh, <laughs> don't do it. And you'd probably have a lot more money right now if you didn't. Mm. Uh, cause obviously I, t- I still smoke. And, yeah. Mm. That's good. Um, yeah. Do you have uh, like any social media or anything to plug? Or you mentioned the design thing you work on. Is that something that's going to be published somewhere that people um, will be able to find uh, it? Or is it just something you're kind of working on for yourself? I'm just kind of working on for myself. I'm actually trying, thinking about sending it into the Ryan Rosillo show. Okay, cool. On ESPN, a uh, podcast that he does. Because uh, they have a, um, it's pretty cool. And this can kind of be my like shout out too. Mm. He does this like life coach thing at the end of his podcast. Uh, this guy, he used to be with like Scott Van Pelt and mm-hmm. he's done stuff with, um, uh, Danny Cannell, you know? Mm-hmm. And, uh, so he like takes emails and like on people that are having like life issues or whatever, and then just like picks the best one and like brings them on the show. So I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, just write the sub, send it in and say, mm-hmm. Hey, right. do you think I even have a shot of being good at this? <laughs> or like, do I just need to stop now? Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's also like, I'm pretty sure there's like uh what is it? Fan cider. Uh, yeah, it's like yeah, a, it's like a, a fan run blog, mm-hmm. um, basically, and I, and I think that they have basically a site for each NBA team yeah. or whatever. Like, I think pretty sure that they also have like a college basketball one yeah. too. I'm not sure though. <clears throat> yep. I've, I've occasionally read some uh, some Orlando Magic fan, mm-hmm. like, and, you know, uh, all power to anybody that wants to to write, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a lot more it, difficult than I like, like. You kind of feel bad when you do like you you like you can tell somebody put a lot of work. Yeah, but you're just like it's not good. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, yeah. And even weird. like I'm, I mean, I'm I'm sitting in the airport 
two days ago and I'm like typing this up and I'm like, what the fuck was I thinking? <laughs> I wrote this down. Like this like really makes no sense. Mm-hmm. Like this, this sentence makes no That's sense. That's what the editing whatever. process is for baby. Um, I'm also fairly certain that like fucking my history teacher thinks the same thing about me. Yep. So. Yep. It's all right. I got told that, you know, cause I recently went back to college and <laughs> I've gone through it. And, uh, my English teacher told me, she's like, you're a great, you're, you're pretty good at writing. It's just, you have no fucking clue what a comma is. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, does it really matter? It's kind of implied, right? I think you mean, I was like, does it really matter? It's kind of implied. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, I think that's going to be it. We're going to, yeah. we're going to head to Anaheim and it's going to be cool. Yeah. I'm going to rock a heat shirt cause yeah. screw it. <laughs> Why not? That's Florida. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a tertiary Duke support cause of justice Winslow. I don't know. There's nothing. Not really. Or Gonzaga not really. cause of Kelly Olenek. I don't know. Yeah. Read into it. I don't know. Go Gators. You're gone. But go Gators. <laughs> All right guys. This has been really fun. Thanks for coming on Keith. It's really cool. Appreciate it. Uh, this has been the Chris and Kyle show. We out. We out, stay weird.